Mrs. Andrews. How's Ian? We'll soon know, Mrs. Andrews. If you'd like to follow me, I'll take you to his ward. Have you been waiting for oh, quite a long time, yes. The staff nurse will tell you everything when she comes, Mrs. Andrews. Well, I hope so. I hope she doesn't treat me like an idiot. Of course not. When I was having Ian, the midwife went on as though being pregnant made you a total moron. I had a tough time with him. But I could have coped with that. It was not being told what was going on. I think that terrified me more than anything. Well, we do try and keep you informed here. And there's nothing worse than not knowing. Nothing. Well, I'll do my best. Right now, there's nothing much to tell. Dr. O'Malley's just having a look at him. But another doctor saw him when the ambulance brought him in. In admissions. It's all part of a routine. Nothing to worry about. They'll just be deciding what investigations they're going to do. Well, might they have to operate? No. Our GP said it was a query meningitis. That's what they suspect. But when will they know? Soon. Look, why don't you go and sit down in Ian's room, and I'll bring you a cup of tea. Oh, hello, Sita. Excuse me, my star. She went to late lunch. Oh, thank you. Not had a wink of sleep. Had me up all night. Crying, saying his throat hurts, his head hurts, being sick. It's terrible when you can't do anything for them. I'll find you a couple of aspirins as well. All right? I'll be able to stay. Oh, as long as you like. We have open visiting here. Paris can come any time during the day. Well, I shan't go home. No, I want to be here. Oh, and I thought you might like to read this while you're waiting. Oh, what is it? It's called Notes for Parents, issued by the hospital authority. Oh, thanks. Will he be back soon? They've just taken him into the clinical room for a lumbar puncture. It doesn't take long. Is that when they inject something into the spine? No, it's when they take some fluid out of the spine. Just a small sample. Then they analyse it and make a diagnosis. Our GP said if the tests were negative, they'd probably let Ian come home straight away. He said it was difficult to be sure it was meningitis. His symptoms could easily be something less serious. Well, we'll soon know. Look, I suggest you put your feet up and have a sleep. You look as if you could do with it. And I'll look in again later. Right? I'm sorry if we seem to be neglecting you, but we've got a baby who's very ill. Oh, poor little thing. He's so much better, nurse. He wants me to read to him. It's a different child to what he was in the night. All right, Ian. Would you like a drink? I think perhaps he would. His throat's probably still rather sore. Is your throat rather sore? We'll get you something nice and cool. And then maybe you'd like a little sleep. All right. Hello. Have a good rest. Oh, sleeping beauty. Mind you, he needed it. He was up all night. You know, I'm sure he'll be fine when he wakes up. And how about you? Well, I wouldn't mind stretching my legs. I've got a bit of cramp sitting here. And the canteen's just across the car park. Oh, I couldn't eat a thing. I'll wait till I get home. Well, could I have a peek around the ward? Mm, yes, of course. We'll keep an eye on Ian. Oh, he's flat out. Shouldn't think he'll wake up for an hour or so, at least. <laughs> I told her what was happening to Ian, what they were doing. You didn't warn her about the lumbar puncture. What might happen? I didn't know. Oh, come on, Sita, you've seen that reaction before. You know it was on the cards. 
I might have alarmed her for nothing. You might also have given her credit for a bit of intelligence. Say, look, this might not happen, but if it does, here's what to expect. Well, couldn't you? Mrs. Andrews does happen to be a pretty sensible woman. I'm sorry. Still don't know why you had to drag me here when I'm off duty. I didn't drag you here. I asked if you could pop in. I did think you might like to apologize to her. I don't consider I've done anything to apologize for. Oh, you don't? For goodness sake, all I did was consider her feelings. You played safe. This was one case where a bit of communication could have saved a lot of grief. You mean she still wouldn't have been dreadfully upset when he came round in that state? She certainly wouldn't have had such a shock. I'm sorry. I just don't see why you're making such a big thing of it. I mean, I didn't commit a crime. I am a staff nurse. It is supposed to be part of my job to tell students where they're going wrong. Yes, and you seem to be enjoying it. I don't see why you have to stick up for her. Well, fair dues. She is a staff nurse and she's supposed to keep her eye on things. She doesn't have to play the big I am. Oh, honestly, you are picking up some of our quaint expressions. Yes, well, I've heard that one often enough about bossy senior staff. And it certainly fits Eva these days since she got her badge. I think you're daft to get so touchy about it. It was the way she told me off. I didn't like her manner. Listen, when you're a staff nurse, I bet you don't have time to be as sweet and considerate as you'd like. We're supposed to be part of the team. Look, she objected to what you did, and you objected to what she did. I think you're both crackers. I don't think you're too bright, either. Thanks. You know she's not going to take her midder. You mean not yet? Not ever. Oh, Joe, don't be so dramatic. Not do midwifery? Well, apparently we don't actually have to. Not at all, not even part one. <laughs> Honestly, C.D., you'd think she'd just said she was going to be a stripper or something. Well, the thing is that we all take it for granted that we do a few months or a year's staffing after we've got our badges, and that then we've got to do midwifery, as though it was written on tablets of stone or something. Well, it isn't. Well, I'm going to. Most of us are. Brent isn't. What I'm baffled about is why you should have this burning yen to work on geriatrics. Have you worked on Sister Blaine's ward yet? No. What's so special about her? Well, she's got the whole place filled with rocking chairs. She doesn't put the patients to bed at night. They get in their pyjamas and sit there in the rocking chairs. <laughs> Cozy. <laughs> it is. How did she manage that? Well, she works with her consultant and they manage to get these things for the old people. And she doesn't give them a hot drink at night. She gives them bread and milk. Well, the bread absorbs the milk and stops them being so incontinent. Sounds fine. Still don't see why you're so keen. Well, you really get to know your patients. I mean, they're usually there for a long time. And I like old people. Well, I'm going to do my midwifery, both parts. I need it when I go back home. All right, then. You stick with your babies. Brent can stick with her old people. And I'll find myself a sexy millionaire, OK? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure.